very good morning to everyone for joining us uh, during this week's business festival. I'm very pleased to be joined this morning by Keith from HB Accountancy, who's going to talk to us uh, for a little while about some of the help and support that's perhaps available from your accountant uh, that you might not even be aware of at this particular moment in time as well. So Keith, a very good morning and thank you for joining us. Morning, Ben. Nice to be with you. Absolutely. Well, we're really pleased to have you with us and to, to hopefully be able to pick your brains this morning for a little while. Um, I just wonder before we do, Keith, if you wanted to just perhaps introduce yourself quickly and, and, and talk about some of your experience briefly. Sure. My name's Keith Grove from HB Accountants. Um, we're a sort of small, medium sized firm based in East Hertfordshire. You know, the firm has come Friday, we actually celebrated 100 years. So it's quite something, although albeit that I wasn't one of the founder members, I do hope you really that. Um, but we've been in the Hoddesdon area for just under 40 years, um, serve a whole range of clients, some large, some small, some in between. You know, we've got a good mixture of experience. Um, technically, we're very strong, and whether we pick up work from other firms or counties, technically, we are excellent, but customer service is absolutely crucial. Um, we cover all sorts of areas, whether it be the normal accountancy, auditing, tax, payroll, just general business advice, and uh, you know the sort of quasi FD role for some of our clients. Yeah, so uh, you know we're well loved and respected in the business community in our area. We do a lot on the networking from PR, promoting our clients, getting them to sort of cross refer, you know, active part of the, the local community, which we consider very important for the council. We're not just sitting in our office and in an ivory tower as it were and so sort of just it's we're very much out there interacting with businesses, wanting to make a difference to our the clients and contacts. And we obviously try to pick up new work. I mean that's that's part of what we're in, in the county for. We believe that we can provide a, a much better service and quality of life than other firms that way. But then we would. <laughs> Okay. And tell me, Keith, obviously you mentioned that you are working with businesses of different sizes. Are those businesses bringing you kind of a range of different issues at the moment? Or are you finding that um, actually, despite the perhaps the size and, and maybe even the industry that the businesses you're working with, are they coming to you with relatively common problems and issues at the moment? <clears throat> to be honest with you, a lot of, I mean, we, this is that we deal with, it's a real range. So some of them have really done ever so well in this in this COVID-19 crisis and there's one particularly the ones that are strong online I mean it's a classic we've got um, one a fairly good sized client they run a plant nursery out in the Enfield area so they've got a physical site you know really struggle but they their online sales have just boomed this is their best year that they've ever had um, but conversely we deal with some recruitment agents and especially ones that are in niche areas they really struggled. Their, their turnover has just crashed virtually nothing. They're just surviving on their past savings, um, sure. business support loans, that sort of thing. Um, in terms of what the, the key thing that's been absolutely crucial throughout the last few months is on the payroll side of things, because it's the furlough. Okay. Um, firms have, you know, used that. It's quite bad that it's out there to stop people making fun, to get funding through. Well, our very last time, they're the classic. They're in the hospitality sector in, in London. And, you know, with the lockdown, people just aren't traveling into London like they used to. Um, and they've had to shut their bars. Um, and so furlough is that absolutely crucial. So we, we run a payroll bit there. And the lady concerned, bless her, she's been absolutely wonderful because there's so much doing. Things are changing all of the time. You know, some advice comes out, it's not very specific. Um, it's actually drilling down, trying to find out what actually is okay. Um, there's a lot, we've been, actually we've been providing lots of advice. Stuff has been coming out every, almost every day from the Chancellor. Um, different things, not just about the payroll, about the loan finances, you know, all the, uh, the, the loan finance. So there's, there's lots to do on, on that front. Um, so those are the, the special things. On the tax side of things, pretty much unchanged. Things have gone on hold um, with with regards to budgets and that sort of thing, because sure. it's a bit more important thing to deal with at the moment. Um, uh, <clears throat> as regards to accountancy work, they'd be 
deadline so they extend the company test extended the deadline by three months which has really helped especially with March year ends there's if March year ends they basically the results were okay at the end of March because the lockdown um happened after that day and things were pretty much shut during the summer but come September things have started to roll along so we've got the, the accountancy is pretty much the same you know we're doing year-end accounts here and all the tax computation but there you know the other thing is just being a general ear listening ear people calling you know it's a stress a stress with everything that's going on and um, we're able to talk through you know various issues but it's more from an emotional relationship point of view it's not just about providing the numbers and just the time sure okay and tell me what kind of um you mentioned obviously a few of the the kind of the services and and stuff that you worked on uh you know with your clients payroll end of year all those kind of things but are there other kind of services and, and roles that you fill with your you know kind of clients day to day that uh, that maybe people might not have thought oh actually i could talk to my accountant about that um good question ben i mean we there are certain specialist areas um that we provide the normal range of accountancy services but we do provide them at a high level in customer service there's no really niche areas that i would talk about I mean, one maybe one thing is is tax planning you know the bread and butter tax is, is okay to spread out the numbers but the main thing is that the lack of quality of tax advice that, that people get because we've got two qualified tax accountants and they're very good by great advice and with tax, it's what you it's what you don't know that you miss. Um, accountants can advise, but if they don't know things, you can't see things from that angle, then they're going to miss that. And so that's one thing that we're, we're very strong at, you know, technically very good. As regards to general areas that we, I mean, solvency, we don't do solvency. We've got a, um, at the arm of our system, financial services, um, but they've been keeping going, nothing unusual. So, you know, maybe that doesn't answer your question particularly well. No, that's okay. No, that's fine. Where we're at, really. There's nothing, nothing left field that I can throw in. Sure. Okay. And in terms of the, you know, businesses, I imagine some of them will have just gone through the, the, the end of year kind of process and stuff and, and, and are sorting out their taxes and stuff at the moment. But um, are, are there changes to the, the tax system that maybe businesses aren't aware of at the moment? Are there allowances that, uh, that have been introduced over the last year that maybe people uh, haven't been brought up to speed with? Um, so generally, there's a lot of concessions with regards to payroll and furloughing and loans and that sort of thing. One thing that you know our businesses are thinking about now is people that may say, well, this has been a tough year, you know, I'm in my 60s, I don't know, do I think about retiring? And a big thing that's come out could be looming large because the Chancellor needs to claw back some money. Um, and one of the things, these obviously certain pr promises were made in the election campaign, they say, and there are certain things he's targeting that are outside of that and could be, could be quite, could raise quite a lot of tax. And one of the key things is what's called capital gains tax. So when businesses sell their businesses they've got something that's called entrepreneurs relief which has really been very generous very generous indeed and you can end up paying as low as 10 percent tax on a reasonable price with the sale okay but um that is on the real sorry my thinking is you've got if you're looking i know you're only looking two months away but so maybe you might have missed the boat but that that could be huge if you sell your business for five million and suddenly it's you've been paying tax of 40 percent it's at both being bolted on to your normal income. That'd be huge. So that, that's something that we're advising clients at the moment have been in, in recent months. Okay. And in terms of the support that's available for new businesses, obviously um, a lot of the inquiries that the Recovery Through Enterprise team have been um, handling over the last kind of few months that the project's been running have all been hand, uh, all been geared around um, people looking at potentially uh, starting a new business and, mm, sure. uh, and and doing something a bit different, you know, while they're sat at home, maybe facing redundancy or, or furlough and stuff. Are, are you aware of and, and can you talk to any kind of specific support and, and relief and assistance that's available for, for people that are maybe in that position and looking to start a new business at this time? 
Yeah, it's a good question. We, I mean, there are lots of supports and organisations like yourself. I mean, in terms of what what we offer is just a normal advice, help and business test out with regards to cooperation. I think it's crucial to get your tax stuff and stuff out of front. If you get it all wrong initially, then you can, you know, come to bite you in the bum and say, well, <laughs> it's, a late, it's a later stage. Um, you might need to think about something like a shareholder agreement. There's so many mixed businesses I've come across where a couple of people get saying, oh, yeah, we, you know, we, we can work together. We've got this new business idea. You know, one is a recruitment, a couple that were only, you know, two, two separate ladies were, were earning big money in the city. And they said, oh, yeah, we'll start up a recruitment agency um, in our office. And within six months, it all gone pear shape. They weren't sure. sure on another. And the fallout from that is just huge. And there's more than one occasion for that. So with regard to new business, it's two individuals. They might know known each other for years. But it's one thing working in the same company. It's another thing actually working together, just the two of you. You know, you do this, I do that. I'm bringing in more business than you are. I should get paid more. Sure. And sure. if you've got a proper shareholder agreement in place, that really helps. I mean, we've got quality um, uh, links with firms. It's the firm's list. They would deal with that. So that's what we're recommending to you know, business partnerships. Obviously, if someone started off their own, it wouldn't be the case. Um, so that that's that sort of thing is, is crucial with regards to a new business business. Sure. As well as all the normal stuff, normal stuff um, that we help with. But like I said, tax sales agreements, looking ahead, planning budgets, especially at this time. Um, who knows? It's very hard to predict what could happen, but people have got to try and bolt something together, get some finance from the banks. So I still think they're fairly active in seeking to, you know, to promote and fund new businesses. So, you know, we've been helping people with cash flow forecasts and budgets, and even existing businesses. You'd imagine going through stress of strain, they, they need some figures that they need to send to the banks, and that's what we're helping them with. Okay. I mean, obviously, you know, when people are looking at starting a new business, potentially, I suppose there is always a, um, you know, a temptation to go, okay, well, I've got my subscription to QuickBooks and I know I can file my taxes online myself at the end of the first year anyway. So I wonder if an accountant is something actually I should be spending money on in that kind of early on period of running a business. It, how well, yeah, what would you say to, to somebody in that um, kind of situation you know about the, the you know the value that a, a professional accountant could bring right from day one yes yeah, good question I, I appreciate in the early days some businesses it's just literally you know Fred or Jane have been made redundant and they've started off working from a room and in their home and you know I wouldn't underestimate the costs are crucial and the quality of the software packages around that, especially when they're dot online, whether it's zero QuickBooks, say, where the market needs it. There's so much that you can actually do these days. Plus, you've got Excel where you can go simple business. Many, you know, I've had this had discussion with business probably at least once or twice a week. They're saying, well, I'm just starting off. What records do I need to keep? So if you're, if you're a small business, you're not that registered, then if you're comfortable with it, they Excel. Can, can, can provide all that you need. Um, it's obviously it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and keeping simple sets of records, as long as they mirror the bank's records, then, then that's the main thing. And then we mop up with doing you know, the normal accounts and stuff, the, you know, the end stuff, probably. But as regards sort of businesses that are that bigger, you know, whereas businesses that are looking to grow, once you cross the that threshold, which is 85,000, then Accounting packages are much more important and getting business advice. I mean, where it's really not, it's not good to cut down on the amount that you pay when you've got ambitious business plans. But if it's you just working at home, you know, you've got maybe you're earning 20,000 or, or less, some businesses are at the moment, then every penny counts. And I can, I, I can understand people not paying accountants. I mean, accountants are not cheap, it's not expensive. Yeah, you always pay for what you get. Um, and I would always recommend you at least have a meeting with the council starting off, you know, for an hour or so. Some some accountancy practices they offer like hours free advice just to help you kick start. Um, and then there is a there's an ear and to 
nudge you along the way. Obviously, if it involves any reasonable amount of work, then we're there providing financial services. Sure. But we need to charge for that. That's, that's the quid pro quo. Um, mm -hmm. But I do appreciate businesses do start and they muddle along. It depends on the individual run of the business. Some have got more financial acumen than others, um, which gives a huge back. Sure. See, I've long said from day one of running my business that the money I spend on my accountant every year is the best money I spend oh, every good year. To hear. Would you like and, to be a partner from, from, from day one, actually, yeah, I knew right from the off. Um, I don't know anything not, near enough about this. I'm just going to hand this over to a professional. If only there were more people like you, because it's this horrible mopping up at the end where someone's, you know, said, oh, I've done these accounts, and so they're an absolute shambles. And I think, well, we do we do do we deal with it because the amount of money that we spend or the sort out there it's just so much more that if they we put them on straight and narrow early on yeah and it's not you know you're looking to charge two thousand to sort out a bit of a mess it's not it's not it's not a win either side it's lose lose both sides. yeah no i agree yeah I think people like you, of a stitching we need, time we need people that. like you ben to you know promote the message that speaks to the council <laughs> it's a it's a it's a win-win for the business i could be the poster boy for well-organized small businessmen everywhere you can you look just like a poster boy <laughs> <laughs> beautiful well um the, the other thing um i, I was going to obviously ask you about was um just kind of generally what the kind of the common sense kind of good advice is that you are kind of sharing with your clients at the minute i appreciate obviously it's very difficult to speak in Kind of specifics but i would imagine at the same time there are some kind of basic fundamentals that kind of ring true regardless of the size of the business and, and the sector perhaps that they're working in so i wonder what are perhaps those kind of golden rules <coughs> if you will that you you always look to kind of impart to people yeah there's a whole range of things i mean every business is every business differs one to another size not just about size and um, all sorts of um, industries sectors that we deal with i mean I think one thing particularly relevant at the moment is cash flow. Cash flow is crucial. Um, we're providing advice for different businesses on that, getting the funding in place, monitoring your ins and outs, you know, especially with them um, that we've just talked about, um, online software packages. You can keep you can it's not a mystery as to what's actually going on in the business. You can see the debtors that you've got outstanding. I mean debt collection is, is crucial. It's not Cash, cash is king, as they say. And uh, if you've got debtors there that they've got their own problems and are not paying you, they it, it knocks all the way through. It makes the future vi viability of the business questionable, even though the underlying profitability may be there. Um, so encouraging business to look after their cash flow, obviously taking advantage of you know things that are available. The government has made available of late, like paying VAT. I mean, the quarter of 31 March has been deferred. It was originally deferred for paying at the end of March coming up. But that's now been, you can now spread that over 12 months. Okay. So the end of the year, which for some businesses of any resource type, that's crucial, absolutely crucial. And paying personal income tax, completely, this is on individuals, not, not businesses. But instead of paying for them out for the end of July, they've been deferred for the end of January. And even then, there's some sort of concessions with regard to that. So I don't know, does that help? No, I think that is really useful, actually. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's it's almost difficult to say, isn't it, what the right kind of option to take is in some of those kind of cases you know because i know personally i, I had the option of, of deferring uh you know my tax payments and stuff for this year and kind of decided well you know while the money's there let's get it done and forgotten about rather than yeah. kind of kicking that can down the road but i appreciate for some people that might not be perhaps a luxury that they've got and i suppose in some in some cases maybe the best thing for some people to do is to to, to, to kind of avail themselves of that option sure with well, some people it's if they can defer it, they'll defer it. It's interest free. So they think, oh, why not? But I, I do I do fully understand what you, you don't want people is to spend money that they should have set aside for taxes. I think I'll pay it now, you know, I need it to cover something, maybe to work on the house or you know, whatever it may be. No, ring fence the money, put it aside so it's there. Um, but by all means, you want to take advantage of credit at the moment, things are particularly difficult. I mean, great for you, Ben. I mean, you've been able to ride through it okay, and some businesses 
touch wood so far. Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's hopefully with the vaccines, it'll become a bit easier to year round unroll. Sure. Um, some businesses, it's been crucial getting the credit from the government. Yeah. Okay. And tell me, if you had to kind of put your, your, get your crystal ball out and look ahead over the next kind of 12 months or so, what do you foresee is going to be the biggest challenge that businesses are going to be up against, perhaps from a financial point of view? <clears throat> I think it's one of the key things is actually gearing up and getting ready again. I mean, business has been almost, some business has been like in its state of dormancy over the last nine months. It's actually getting out there, getting restarted, all the businesses. You know, people have done Zoom, haven't they? Zoom network. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's nothing like meeting people. I'm not, you know, Zoom is Zoom, but actually meet people, form better relationships is true. So it's getting people getting out of their, if they come, they can be comfortable working at home. Some people, that's what they seem to prefer, but actually getting out, meeting, meeting people, networking, actually kicking these things off. Um, re-establishing things with suppliers and customers who again have been struggling. It's actually moving out in a measured and thoughtful way in order to see what, you know, make the most of business opportunities that will be available, albeit that they might take a while to actually come to fruition. Mm. And I suppose we've also got a certain amount of uncertainty around the timeline for everything as well, don't we? Are we future-proofing for six months? Are we aiming for the end of the year? There's so much at this point that's unknown. Yeah, well, well, things come and go. I mean, like the, you know, the the vaccine, the Oxford, AstraZeneca one, they now just found out that it's it's not so good against the South African variant. So that's put doubt in people's minds. You know, people still go ahead, rolling out, getting the vaccine, getting the chance. Obviously, Ben, you're probably not shit until it's done in September. Uh, it's it's going to be a little while, it's, I think, for me. It's yeah. a long while, yeah. <laughs> so um, so um, that may create a deal. There's just a lot of uncertainty. It seems to be a lot of confidence that things would you know, be fine come spring, come early summer. But, you know, these variants can just knock things back. It's going to be an interesting one, I think, isn't it, over the next uh, few months to see how it all goes. Yeah, I think mean, we're all hopeful. Well, we're just all hopeful seems to be going things well. get back to normal, but it might take a while. Yeah, and at least I suppose we are in the fortunate position that the vaccine rollout seems so far to be going at least better here than anywhere else. Yeah, no, we're definitely ahead of the curve. Definitely. Well, um, Keith, I've really ap- appreciated you taking the time chatting with me this morning and, and sharing nice, your yeah, uh, advice and thoughts with us. If people wanted to find out more about uh, yourself, your practice, and, and to find out how they might be able to, to, to avail themselves of your services and experience mm. in the future, how would people go about doing that? What's the website? Well, there's, a couple, there's always a few ways. One thing is give us a call, which our number is 01992 again, double six. Have a look at the website www.hbaccountant.co.uk is a raft of resources there. You get a feel for what our firm's like, people there, the advice that we offer. And just, you know, just that, that would give you a very good indication, very good flavour of our firm. Okay. And I understand you've just celebrated your centenary, is that right, at the firm? That's right, yeah, it's 5th of February. Nice. It's obviously, obviously, we couldn't um, celebrate it in the way that we had planned. I mean, we had planned to have a big big event uh, inviting lots of clients to contact but very difficult to, to do well it's impossible to do that but you know the plan is for later in the year um maybe in the, in the autumn september october time that we have a bit of a bash to invite, invite people along so yeah but, but we're yeah just hopeful really nice well that's um it's you, quite some, you don't get to a hundred some... not out without doing something very well so congratulations no. on the centenary key well i mean we've Formed a hundred years. That's that is quite something. And uh, the form the firm was formed up in the London Northwood area in um, okay. hundred years ago. How it's grown from there is quite something. Well, that's fantastic. And long may it continue. Here's to another hundred mm. years moving forward. Exactly. With that work. exactly. Awesome. Well, Keith, thank you very much again for your time. Genuinely, really appreciate uh, your time. Thanks so much for chatting with us.